Welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 282. On this episode of the podcast, Jen will offer a year-end review of 2020. That should go well. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast. I'm your host, Jen Swanson. This is the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Careers by Jen is a listener-sponsored podcast, and if you like the content, please consider supporting the show as a patron. You can do so for as little as $1 a month. Head over to careersbyjen.com and click on support to learn more. How do I even begin this episode when 2020 was just a completely unexpected, awful, strange and challenging year that we are very happy to see the back end of. (laughs) And what am I going to say about it? Well, stick around, my friend. I'm going to share some of what I learned, Uh, some podcasts that I listened to, some books that I've enjoyed, some new adventures that I'm going on. I promise there won't be negativity. This will be uh, some something about what good has come from this upside down year. Some of what has inspired me a little and a little bit about what I'm looking forward to for 2021. And my hope is that By doing this, you can find some hope and inspiration too. Back right after this. You've updated your resume, you've sent it out, and you've been selected for an interview. Congratulations. And now you want to get ready, really ready. This is where Careers by Jen can help. We have a comprehensive online course called How to Ace a Job Interview When You Haven't Interviewed in a Long Time. This video-based course is jam-packed with information, advice, and exercises to help you get completely prepared to walk into an interview situation with confidence. From exactly what to prepare in advance, to how to answer common questions, to what questions you might ask the interviewer, and so much more, this course is designed to get you ready. Visit careersbygen.com and click on Training Resources to see the curriculum, preview a couple of the introductory lessons, and see what others who have taken the course are saying about it. Visit careersbygen.com and get ready to ace your next interview. The Careers by Jen podcast is recorded on the unceded and traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, including the Matsqui, the Kwantlen, the Keitsi, the Semiamu, and the Stolo First Nations people. Things I am grateful for, my friend. I am grateful for <laughs> technology, especially for Uh, Zoom and FaceTime and Google Hangouts and all of those kinds of things. Um, And visits that we have had with friends that, you know, before the pandemic, we never ever would have thought of having a Zoom dinner with friends who live hours and hours away or, um, or meetings held that way instead of having to drive to get to places and to have meetings. And on Christmas Day, because we are in lockdown here and couldn't get together with anyone outside of our household, we actually had a trivia game Christmas afternoon organized by our eldest daughter. And uh, she had her in-laws in there and all sorts of people who are far flung and not in the same town at all. And, um, and so that was really kind of fun. So um, Zoom has been, you know, although I talk about being exhausted by it, um, I have been recording podcasts through it with people around my guests that I have on with people around um, the country and in some cases around the world for a very long time. But I did not use it on a daily basis before. And now um, with the work that I do with the church, uh, with with some coaching clients, some people prefer the phone, but some of them prefer to see your face. <laughs> and then um, and then a lot of uh, events and visits and conversations. And one of the most fun things was having um, dinner where we got our dinner ready and got, you know, a couple of glasses of wine out. And our friends who live they're about a 12 to 14 hour drive away if we were to drive through mountains and snow. And of course, you wouldn't do it in the winter. They got all their stuff out and we all all sat together and had dinner together. And it was fantastic. Um, and, and I thought, why the heck haven't we done this before? 
you know? Um, so yeah, some, some benefits, some bonuses has, have come from it. And I know that, um, uh, some of the people in the church that I work at have said that some of the things that we have been doing online, um, they would prefer to do rather than having everybody go out in the evening, you know, in the cold dark or the snow and have to drive somewhere to get together in a cold building and and have uh, a Bible study or a, a book study or whatever it was we were doing. And um, they would prefer just to go somewhere warm and comfy and uh, and do it via Zoom. So who knows what 2021 is going to look like. But these were some of the benefits. And you know, that kind of thing, while I love getting together with people in real life, um, uh, not driving so much is good for the environment. And I know there are a lot of people who are actually going to continue working even part-time from home, even after the vaccine and after things open up again. So fascinating. So that was one of the things that uh, was a surprise and kind of a neat thing that has come from um, this 2020 experience. Uh, the second thing for me is that church doesn't have to involve a building. And I know that I certainly shed a few tears not being able to be in my little antique heritage church um, on Christmas Eve, full of people with a candlelight and the silent night and, and just how beautiful it is and how special it is to have a place that's full to the rafters. And um, it, there's just, it's been so many years that that's been part of my Christmas Eve experiences, you know, having the marathon of doing one, two, or sometimes three services in an evening and having the place packed and oftentimes packed with people you don't see all year. Um, and that that was really hard to do it online and do it virtually this year. Um, but for many, many, many of the other things we have figured out, we scrambled in March. My goodness, we thought this was only going to be a couple of weeks. We scrambled in March and have figured out um, how to do community and how to continue to do many, many, many of the things that we would do in person normally, virtually. And and while I hope it doesn't stay this way, I hope we do go back to doing some things in person and see real people and have experiences together and be able to sing together again. Um, I, I really, truly think that there has been an interesting freedom in being able to, um, to take in a, a worship service in another city, in another province, in another country, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and to check other things out, you know, once in a while. So there are some benefits, there are some bonuses to this. The third thing that I found uh, is happening an awful lot is the ability to advertise, interview, and hire people virtually. And I know this has happened before in the past. I've been hired for jobs with virtual interviews before, um, my corporate training um, work that I do, it was a virtual interview because there were people in two different countries and um, different time zones. And I had to do my interview several years ago with that company um, to be able to do that. And so, and I was part of a, a group that was interviewing and hiring um an office administrator and uh, recently and it worked out beautifully so um it, you, it is possible. Um, and I have been speaking with uh, people that I know who are in the job search process. And many, many, if not all right now, of the job interviews that people are attending are virtual. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about uh, virtual interview tips, if that's of interest, I do have a little video over on YouTube about that. Um, on how to uh, prepare for a specifically for a virtual interview. Um, so th so that's interesting. That is possible and that's becoming uh, a big time saver for everybody involved in many ways as well. Um, the, the fourth thing that I'm grateful for and that I think is amazing are the number of online concerts that people are doing courses and and interesting events that are happening. I even did um, 
uh, a virtual craft fair that I attended locally and was able to see what the crafters were selling. That isn't the same. Honest to goodness, that isn't the same. I'd much rather go to a place and actually see the stuff. And we have some absolutely amazing uh, craft markets around Christmas time in uh, in Vancouver. And um, yeah, it was not the same at all looking at it online. But I was really glad that people were still able to put out their things, because all of the farmer markets and all of those things had stopped. So I'm really glad that people were able to sell their things online still. So that's good. Um, and concerts, it's fun. It's been fun seeing people in their kitchens and in their <laughs> in their living rooms doing concerts um, and seeing the inside of people's homes. And uh, and yeah, it's been just a little bit different. Uh, so I've enjoyed that. Um, the fifth thing is we got to know our neighbors a little bit more. Um, we have neighbors that we've always smiled and said hello to and, you know, chit chatted a little bit with. But there was this bond that happened when we were all outside banging pots and pans at seven o'clock at night for the uh, um, the healthcare workers and the, the emergency service workers. And this year, all of our neighbors went around giving each other little gifts um, uh, for Christmas, you know, little bags of goodies. And uh, it was very sweet. And I think I think we've gotten closer and there's a bit of a bond formed there with, uh, with people that we maybe didn't have as much of before this all happened. So that's kind of cool. Um, I know I have phoned more people and made more of a concerted effort to reach out to people who I hadn't seen in quite some time. And uh, when it was allowed in the summer, I got together with some people, socially distanced, of course, but um, the restaurants were open a little bit in the summer and there were patios and there were places you could go for walks. And so I made sure I did that um, a little bit more than, than usual. Another thing I did this year was I took an awful lot of online training courses on all different kinds of topics, including Mandarin. <laughs> Ni hao. <laughs> um, I'm not very far into it, but um, I did sign up for a Mandarin course and started taking some of that uh, with this fantastic fantastic couple of guys who live in China who are um, ex expats from other countries. One is British and one is American and they are teaching something called the Mandarin Blueprint and it is a fantastic, highly recommend. I have no affiliate association. i just letting you know that this is uh, an amazing couple of guys, Luke and Phil, who are teaching Mandarin to people who have never done it before from zero. And their method is brilliant. And so um, it's fun. And not only do you get to learn um, to speak, uh, to read, but you also get to learn the characters and um, how to remember them in a very, very creative and clever way. So if that's something on your bucket list, <laughs> I highly recommend you check that out. I have been listening to podcasts um, also uh, because I'm a big podcast fan and I have been listening to all different topics of podcasts. And one of the things I've been very interested in is decluttering. And I know a lot of people have done that when you were busy locked down and started going through things. And, and one of the things I truly believe is that if you declutter your space, you actually feel calmer inside. And honest to goodness, this is the time of year, January after Christmas is the time of year when I typically get, go on a cleaning rampage anyways, because I just want to put everything away, all the decor, all the tree, everything, put it away and have everything spacious and calm and clean again. Well, uh, uh, the decluttering uh, podcast that I listen to is called A Slob Comes Clean. And the woman's name is Dana, and she is hilarious. And if you want some inspiration and uh, are interested in listening to that, um, she is amazing and shares some really practical um practical tips that aren't extreme. This is not somebody who's, you know, going to tell you to get rid of all your stuff or anything. She's super down to earth. And she talks about the container um, concept where um, you, you decide what the container is. It could be 
uh, a bin, it could be a box, it could be a bookshelf, it could be a closet, it could be, you know, however you define the container. And then you decide that nothing more than fits in that container can go into it. And um, anyway, she's brilliant. I highly recommend you check out A Slob Comes Clean, uh, the podcast. I have been listening to um, uh, The Bible for Normal People, which is a fun podcast to listen to because, of course, with my other work, that's part of what I do. Um, And uh, that's been a lot of fun listening to that. Um, I listen to uh, another podcast. Well, so many. I mean, there's one called The Green Dreamer. Um, which is all about um, uh, sustainability and gardening and um, things that are good for the planet and environmentalism, which is also um, a passion of mine. Um, So that has been fun to listen to. Anyway, I have lists and lists of podcasts. It's really hard to Um, tell you about all of them. Um, There are a couple of fellows that I actually met at the Vancouver Podcast Festival last year um, who uh, live in the next town over from me, and they have a crime uh, podcast called Dark Poutine. And if you're not familiar with what poutine is, poutine is a Canadian Quebecois um, uh, French fry delicacy where you take French fries and you put cheese curd on them and then you smother them in gravy and that is poutine. And so their show Dark Poutine is um, this an incredibly popular crime, true crime uh, podcast. And these are two guys that, you know, started doing this out of their basement in Surrey and uh, it has gone viral. And uh, I met them at a conference, like I said, last year. And um, lovely, humble, beautiful souls, these two guys. So so that's a, a fun one if you want some entertainment that's a little bit different. All right. Um, reading is the other thing I was able to do more of this year because we were at home and you couldn't go places. And so um, I managed to do a lot of reading. And one of my dreams that I have been um, dreaming of for a number of years now that was made a reality this year is that um, we put up a beautiful little Um, They're called uh, little lending libraries, little free libraries in our front yard. And uh, my beautiful son and his partner um, built it. He built it and she decorated and painted it all. She's an artist uh, by trade. So um, she decorated it all and it's in the Alice in Wonderland theme and it is absolutely adorable. And my biggest joy has been watching people come to the library and stop at the library. And I've had little thank you cards in the library. And people have stopped us when we were getting into our vehicle and said, I just am enjoying your library so much. And people put books in it and take books out of it. And um, it's always got books of different you know, different kinds of books in it. And um, it's been really fun going out to the little library every day or two and uh, making sure it's all neat and tidy and seeing what, and one of the, seeing what's in there. And one of the problems is that I ended up with a stack of books on my bedside of books that I want to read that I found in this little library that other people have put in. And uh, I'm going to read them and put them back out there for other people. But anyway, that was a, that was my birthday present in July. And that was a dream come true was to have a little free library in our community. And uh, so we put one up next to our rose bush in our garden. And um, yeah, so that was, that was lovely. That was fun. Um, I did a lot of gardening this year and cooking and canning. Uh, making jams and uh, interesting things like caramelized onion maple jam to give away uh, in at Christmas and um, uh, and grew interesting 
things. And one of the things I tried growing, which um, didn't work so well because there was some kind of bug that was eating it, but I think this year I'll have a better success, was something called ground cherries. And I got, I listened to a podcast and I got the seeds from a woman in Nova Scotia um, who told quite an interesting story about these ground cherries. And they're like, there's other names for them. And I'm trying to think of the other names for them now, but they're orange and they have a brown papery leaf and sometimes you'll see them in fancy restaurants as a garnish on a plate Um, but they're quite uh, they can either go tart the way a tomato would or sweet the way a cherry would and um, you can make all sorts of interesting preserves with them and apparently they're very 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 prolific if they're in the right spot and mine were not we had a few that came from them, but um, my hope is that uh, I still have some seeds and that the ground cherry um, crop this 2021 summer, spring, summer will be uh, a big one. So we'll see, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Um, the other thing I started this year um, was uh, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube videos. And as you know, I've mentioned, I started uh, really paying attention to my YouTube channel. And I only started that in August and only did about a video a week. Um, I'm going to ramp that up. And um, I am going to be uh, doing a lot more on YouTube Um in the future, because uh, it's fun. <laughs> and, uh, and there are people that are seem to be interested. And one of my videos has over a 1000, I think it's, um, it's quite a few, it's almost 2000 uh, views so far. So that's pretty exciting. So um, if you haven't gone over there to, uh, I think I probably said this already, Careers by Jen um, on YouTube, uh, please do and check it out. And there's a lot of content. The, the podcasts are all there in audio format as well, but um, there are some new videos for you to see. Um, the other thing that I started this year was um, the Huddle Journeys, which uh, is just beginning to take off. And these are the, uh, this is the app that you can download that has uh, seven day transformational journeys on it that are created and designed by a number of people um, in uh, Canada and the United States so far. And um, these are coaches and teachers and mentors who have uh, a lot of different and varied backgrounds and who are putting a lot of time and effort into creating these journeys that are video based through this app. So um, that's happening. And that's pretty fun. Um, Another thing I did is that I'm grateful for is started a a different fitness routine. I have been doing kickboxing at a women's kickboxing gym for about four years and got really tired of the same workout. I was very, there was a lot of twisting and I was getting injured actually. And the, um, uh, I was worried about COVID and Um, the way the gym was set up. And so I decided, I made a decision after I discovered an amazing online fitness instructor for women uh, 50 and up. Um, It's good for anybody, really. And there are younger people and older people watching it, and there are men watching it too. Um, But she is a YouTuber, and her name is Paula with an H-P-A-H-L-A, Paula B Fitness. Um, on YouTube. And I started doing her workouts. And oh my goodness, she puts all this stuff out for free on YouTube. Um, I decided to support her via Patreon. um, Because I gave up my gym membership. And I thought, oh my goodness, this woman is providing amazing content. So I wanted to support her in that. And if you are looking for a new online home based fitness workout thing, then check that out. And actually, the latest video that I put out on YouTube this past week is about uh, the gym versus home fitness and which one, the pros and cons of each. And, um, and I was trying to figure out if I would stay doing it at home. And so that's what that video was about. Um, But I also started running and I never thought of indoor running before. Uh, which is kind of weird, um, but it works. I have been running three days a week indoors, and as soon as it gets nice out, I'm going to try running outside. And who knows, I might actually sign up for 
the Vancouver Sun Run if it um, if it runs this year. It may not because so many people crowd in together. So they might they might not do it again this year. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, a couple more things in the things that I'm grateful for from 2020. Um, clothing. I started watching some people on YouTube around slow fashion. Um, and uh, one of the people that I took a look at was a woman named Alyssa with a Y, Alyssa Bell Tempo, B E L T E M P O. And Alyssa is, um, is a uh, uh, really lovely person <laughs> who lives in uh, Montreal or somewhere in, in, uh, in Montreal, in Quebec. And she talks about slow fashion and, um, and how to dress professionally. And um, she talks about thrifting quite a bit, which I'm a fan of. She talks about um, how to always look polished and put together, how to shop your closet. And so I spent quite a bit of time um, getting rid of stuff out of my closet and looking at what I do have and figuring out what one or two things I'm missing to be able to have a wardrobe that's very flexible and professional looking and um, and long lasting. And yeah, so that was a whole little adventure looking at um, Alyssa's uh, what YouTube stuff. So there's somebody if you're interested in that. And, uh, and the, the last thing that I'm grateful for are all the new skills that I've learned. Um, I'm learning, I'm continuing to learn editing and video editing, which is what prompted me with the YouTube thing. And I had to do that for work because when you take church out of a building and make it online, um, it takes a lot of uh, tech uh, learning to be able to edit audio and sound and make it look good and sound good. And so I've been playing around with uh, doing that. We have somebody who's doing the main part of it. I've been helping occasionally. And uh, very soon I'm going to be getting a new program that will help me to do it um, so that I could do the whole thing if the other person is unable to or, or wants a, a break or whatever. So I um, have learned an awful lot and I was goofing around on my last YouTube video with some little cartoons that I popped in <laughs> partway through as I was talking and I'm going to get fancier um, as my YouTube journey goes on uh, because I, I have to learn these things for my other job. So there you go. So those are some of the silver linings, some of the things I'm grateful for about this hard and bizarre and, and um, difficult year. And I do recognize that I've been very lucky in that I've been able to work from home. I know a lot of people have not. Um, I'm very, very lucky that um, I'm, I'm employed and that uh, my family is, uh, everyone has their jobs and is healthy and well. And, um, and I do know people who've had COVID. I know people who've been very, very sick. Um, we have a family member in a care home in the United States that we have not been able to physically go see because of all the quarantine rules. Um, and my husband went and saw his dad once and uh, because we thought he was, uh, we thought he was so sick that he wasn't going to come out of the hospital, but he did rally. So he's back home again. So that's good. But, um, but Scott went down to see him and uh, then had to come back in quarantine for two weeks because those are the rules. So it's been very, very difficult that way. And so I recognize that, uh, while I talk about all the things that are silver linings for me that I have learned, um, I have had a relatively, a light go of it compared to an awful lot of people. And, uh, and I'm well, well, well aware of that. All right. So, um, things I'm looking forward to, um, I am looking forward to, um, again, learning more tech and learning about video editing and getting some new equipment shortly so that I can, um, I can get even fancier <laughs> and, uh, and see how that all works. Um, I'm looking forward to being able to hug my family and my friends again. Um, that has been the hardest part is not being able to uh, give big hugs um, 
to to my family members, uh, my mom and uh, my older two kids who don't live in this house because they have their own <laughs> their own houses and their own lives and um, and uh, and just friends when you meet with them and that's been really really hard. So I'm looking forward to hugging people again. I'm looking forward to gardening season, which I always do. I'm looking forward to growing on YouTube. Um, it feels like an exciting new adventure. Um, and I am looking forward to winding up, I'm sorry, to winding up this podcast after episode 300. And the reason is it's been 10 years and it will be almost 10 years. And this will be the 10th year. And um, I think that's a good run. <laughs> I think 300 episodes is a good run. And um, I'm, I'm going to shift over to doing stuff on YouTube. And um, I am excited for you to come see me over there if, uh, if, if that's your thing. And I realize it may not be that podcasts might be um, more your style. So I appreciate you keep listening until uh, we are done after episode 300. And if you miss some, go back and find them. They will be archived and still available. And uh, I will leave them up um, so that people can find them and still listen to them because that's a lot of content over the years. Um, but if you do wish to make the move over to uh, video, um, some of them will be a lot shorter, some of them will be long. Um, and so I welcome you to come over there and check it out as well. I look forward to trying to run outside <laughs> and to see if I'm any good at this. You know, what a weird thing to start doing at 53, right? Is <laughs> to take up a brand new sport. Ah, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I want to continue to declutter and organize and simplify life. We have an awful lot of stuff because we have family members who have died, who have given, you know, we've inherited all their stuff and... <sighs> There's just a lot of stuff. And uh, and so I've been listening to a lot of things, uh, watching The Minimalist Mom. Uh, her name is Dawn. She's on YouTube and she talks about, um, about things and how to get rid of things, especially when the things have sentimental value. Uh, of course, we keep some of it, but there's a lot of it. So that's more of what I want to be doing. I really look forward to traveling somewhere again. <laughs> Uh, going somewhere for the weekend, getting away, doing something like that. Um, I look forward to going to a movie in a movie theater or a concert or a play or a musical. Um, that has been something that I've really missed. And and my last one is that I'm really, really looking forward to family dinners. Uh, we love to cook and we have the room to have a whole bunch of people around our dining room table. And our dining room table has been so lonely this in 2020. Uh, we're the house in the middle. Uh, some people live, you know, anywhere up to an hour um, to the west and others live up to an hour to the east. And we're the house in the middle. And so the family usually congregates in our home and on our deck outside. And we did have some people out on the deck when we were allowed to do that in the summer. But um, that was all locked down again for the holidays. So it was really weird. Um, but I look forward to feeding people again and having people at our dinner table. So 2020 has been one heck of a year with so many awful and divisive and devastating and hard and sad and unbelievable. And as the word was used over and over and over again, unprecedented <laughs> things that have happened. But my hope is that this little bit of a year-end reflection of mine has helped you to start think about thinking about all the things that you have learned and to think about where you have grown because of it and also to think about the things you are looking forward to. So I'm going to leave you with a little bit of homework for you. Um, in some circles, this uh, process, this, pr this uh, exercise is called an examine. E-X-A-M-E-N. Sometimes we do this in uh, spiritual coaching, spiritual direction. We uh, ask people at the end of one year to, to write down um, the things that they are grateful for, the things that they are ready to let go of, and what they're looking forward 
to for the new year. It is a spiritual exercise in some ways. And so my homework for you is uh, to take a little bit of time sometime very soon for yourself. Sit quietly with a journal or a laptop or a piece of paper or even just think about it um, for a little while uninterrupted and do some of your own reflecting. And here are some questions for you. What about 2020 has been good? What did you learn about yourself or learn about anything? And what are you grateful for that has come out of uh, what has happened in 2020? And then the next question is, what are you looking forward to in 2021? So I will leave you with these reflection questions, my mini examine for you to ponder, my friend. Thank you so much for listening. If you're still here listening to the end, please pop over to Careers by Jen on YouTube and check that out. And until next time, Happy New Year. And take very good care. Stay healthy. And uh, and let's say a big rousing goodbye to 2020. And I'll see you next year. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that, and together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.